Hey, how's it going? This is Frank and I. Let's start the timer. Today, we're continuing our journey of Obsidian, how to use it in 15 minutes by focusing on building our Para system. If you've never heard of Para before, Para is projects, areas, resources, and archives. And the thinking behind it is a way of giving you a structure to organize all the different containers of ideas and thoughts you might have around. I'm not going to go into the specifics of each, rather I'm here to demonstrate if I had 15 minutes what I would do to use it and maximize effectively. So we've already left it set up and I'll have the timer running just so you know where we're at. We set up projects yesterday by creating projects, areas, resources, and archives. So we're inside of Obsidian and we're seeing many different views. What I'd like to do right now is start closing some of these by clicking on Command W. So I can get back to my program here. What is Para? I briefly explained it. I've set it up. Okay, now what, right? Well, one of the first things we did was we created this project. But what I'm going to do in here is go in here and create my project list. You ever have it where you have a lot of things going, but you don't know exactly what to do? Well, your project list is a way of organizing a lot of the work into a unified construct where you start entering uh, tools that enable you to think better about your work. So what are the things I'm working on? Well, one, I need to create a 30-day Obsidian Challenge program. So what are some of the tasks we'll do that? I'm not going to list that just yet. Another thing is edit the videos for day one, which I have already done because I do a single take. And another project uh, I'm going to need in here is Promote the Obsidian challenge on social media. Projects. So this looks great, right? But have you ever found it where you don't necessarily have the scope on how to understand your projects? So what can help you? What I'm going to do next here is I'm going to create a note for this note taking system. And yesterday we learned about the hashtag hashtag or the, the bracket bracket. And in here, I'm going to create a methodology, smart note taking system. So what I'd like to do then is click there. And you see, I'm putting it in the, in the vault here. What I'd like to do for smart note taking is when take a note, defining goals are specific, measurable, Realist, smart, achievable, measurable, realistic, and timed. What I'm aiming to do in this series is show you uh, how I start to integrate different knowledge bits of pieces that I have into a system that I actually feel like using. It starts to add value. Now I think, what do you think? I think this is now a good segue to, and I'm going to make myself smaller here, to make myself smaller, a segue to introduce to you a feature inside of Obsidian that is super cool. And that is the linked to the graph view locally. So what is this? Well, inside of Notion, you might already notice that there's this little ellipsis on the top right corner. Let me show you something super cool. You ready for it? If you click here to where it says local graph, you can start seeing where your notes are stored. Now, this is great, you might like this view, but personally what I like to do is I like to move this information down here. And then by moving my panel, I could immediately, and I'm gonna close this, start seeing where I linked this connection and let the system start to reveal to me measurable or, or at least visual connection points that are really cool. Okay, so we're at 10 minutes. And we've already learned about the local graph view now, how do you use it? Well, for one, think about this. If you can see everywhere where you're linked, everything inside of your document, wouldn't that add more value to how you start interacting with your notes? And in this case, smart note-taking system, um, while interesting and useful, it's not something that I'm using right away. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that into my resources so I can have it living there as a way to move out of my clutter and enable me to focus more on what I'm doing. Okay, 
So this is, this is cool, but what is it that we wanna do? So let's go ahead and open up our 30-day project demonstration. Well, for one, uh, we saw we have that 30-day. Wouldn't it be awesome if I could link and create a page for that project? Look at that. So let's go ahead and do just that. And we've already spoken about this project. What do we need? Well, for one, we need to start defining some criteria, right? They do. What else do we need for a project? We need to have a timeline, which we have a date due. Tasks involved. And then we could have something like a success criteria. If I could spell this correct. Criteria. Criteria. Okay. Tasks involved. So again, using Obsidian, I'm going to create some markdown. So I'm using a hashtag. What do I need? Well, for one, I need to define an outline of my videos. What's something that would, what is my success criteria? How do I know this is a success? And you may, have, you may be wondering, why did I put that? Well, those domino looking signs, the dot dots mean something, and I'll get to that. They're a way that you could start building queries in the future. But before we get to that, uh, I don't want to just quite yet focus in on that. What I'm looking to do here is define an outline of my videos. I can use and reuse. Another thing that I can do in here, lay out the overview of the program or the month. Install mind mapping. Ooh. You ready for this? Let's do it. Today I was focused on para, but when I start thinking, at least in the initial phases of a project, how it all connects and looks, mind mapping is the way to go. I'm going to introduce you now to the first of many community plugins. So here's just a few gotchas. There are a few things to keep in, mo in mind when you're looking at community plugins. Like any software you install, you could cause data integrity because, again, they're open source. People are looking at them. It's just something that you have to be aware of. For the most part, they are safe. But again, use at your own caution. OK, so now that I have community plugins installed, what are they? Well, community plugins are extension pieces Think about them like little uh, modules that you can build onto your video game that make you and give you extra features, extra ways of performing things, of, of moving around and things, of doing more. What I'd like to do right now is install one little uh, plugin. Think about like a, a video cassette that I'm about to put in, or if that's too young for you, a USB drive that I'm going to put in that's going to reveal and give me extra code. It's a program that I'm running here. And I'm going to type in mind map. Now, of all the mind maps that exist here, my favorite is this enhancing mind map. And I'll show you why. Enhancing mind map enables you to move pieces around in a really cool way. So once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and enable that. And let's just check in these options. There's some options here, like how big of a font size do you want? Or do you want it to be at the beginning? And you can even change the colors or have it random. I like random. Install mind mapping plugin. Okay, so we've just done that. I can check that off. But why would I want that? Because what I'm going to do is create a 30 day Obsidian challenge mind map overview. So what I've done is I've created a note. I've used my brackets, which you're already starting to get familiarized with. Okay, cool. So it's an empty page. So how do we use mind maps? Well, time to release the Kraken. <laughs> I'm joking. What I mean here is let's go into our settings and start to make use of some shortcuts. What do you think? So under editor, uh, there's some neat items that I like to use. Files and links. We have everything going to the inbox, which we've changed, right? So it should be underscore inbox. So make sure to update that. 
under appearance, everything looks good. I'm the font again. It's it's default. But here we go with hotkeys. But before we get to that, what I'd like is to show some of these core plugins. Core plugins have many different items. So a lot of it is turned on. Random note if you want to turn on random notes. But the one that we're looking for is slash commands. Slash commands is a shortcut that makes it so that you go on a lot faster. Okay, we're about like four minutes left. Uh, slides are kind of cool, so I'll turn them on just to show you what that starts to look like. And then uh, synchronize, if you have, or the paid Obsidian Sync, you can totally use that. Let's go back to big, yay. Uh, not that big, right? We only want, we only want it a little bit. And then um, workspaces is kind of cool. I like having these on. But again, these might not make sense on what they do, and no worries, we'll get to them as we cross that bridge. But for now, just know that we're setting these up. Okay, so one of the plugins we activated was this command plugin. You see what this does? What this does is this opens up all the different ways or interactions that you can have within Obsidian. But what I'm looking for is enhancing mind map, that plugin that we just installed. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to create a new mind map. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And what I'm going to do just for right now is I'm going to minimize these and make these a little bit smaller so I have more room. So this looks cool, right? Not bad. Where is it? Well, we know that every new thing we create is going to be inside of here. So we're going to call this uh, new mind map. And we can call this something like new mind map. Okay. So then inside of here, we could put like option one. We can also create another one over here, option two and option three. And again, what I'm doing is I'm pressing and then I'm pressing, uh, you can either press this little plus sign or alternatively, you can press the tab and tab will create a new uh, branch. But what's interesting here is again, our options up above we can actually open this up as a markdown file. So this, my friends, this code right here is what tells Obsidian that any page you want it to be a mind map needs that. It's pretty neat, right? But you know what? As we're in here, one of the things I like to start doing right now is create this template folder. So under resources, what I like to do is create templates. The other folder I like to set up in here is a folder for attachments or images. So I just call it attachments. This is, this is small. I mean, you, you will pick, but what I like to do is use a capital. Feel free to be consistent in your way, but that's just kind of how I, how I operate. And you know what, this new mind map, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into templates. Right now it doesn't make sense because what we're about to do next is begin to use the power of templates to create and build on top of what we've done. So we're going to go here into settings and under settings, we're going to go into plugins for the community. Well, we have enhancing mind map. What we're going to look for next is a template plugins. So templater is a plugin that we can start using, which is kind of cool. I like it. So we're going to install it. Templater is like one of the more advanced plugin features. But what we can do here is also now under hotkeys, let's put in templates. And inside of this in insert templates, we're going to set up a command T. Cool. So now let me close this tab. Let me go back to the 30 day obsidian, which we have over here under our projects list, which we have we created over here, right? So it's these two. So they're starting, as you can tell, they're starting to get a little bit out of, out of the way. Delete, delete. So I'm going to move this into my projects. Okay. 30 day obsidian challenge. There we go. 
we click this challenge map, Command T. We're going to say template, insert template. There is none. And that's because one thing I forgot to tell you is under templates, you have to specify where your templates are at. Okay, so now that I've done that, bam, we've got, whoops, I don't want to minimize you. Come back. Well, it looks like it went to bed. We've got this new mind map. And in here, what we're going to do now is change it. And what I like to do is you can go over here where you save it and you can view this as a mind map. Toggle, toggle, toggle. Okay, let's go back. You can just click out of it and click back in here and now you have a 30 day challenge. Okay, there's more hotkeys that I like to install, but tomorrow we're gonna to focus on some of the ones that I do that make it just so that I work a lot better. But in recap, what did we get done today? Well, today we went from the basic, basic structure of Para, we installed community plugins, core plugins, and then we also got started with mind mapping, which is a really neat feature that I use indispensably. Not only that, we also took a look at what the local graph view is, and there we have it. We are starting to use Obsidian in a way that makes sense. If you like this video, sign up, register for more. Uh, they're coming, and I'm excited. Thank you so much for joining. I'll see you on the next video.